Hello everybody, Derek here from Addictive Tips, and in this video we are going to be going over how to upgrade the Linux kernel in OpenSUSE Leap. So the first thing you should do when you update the kernel is check the current version. And uh, we can do that with uname-r and we see that we are running the 4.12 kernel. If you don't really care that much about uh, new drivers or improvements or new features. 4.12 is probably going to do it for you. But uh, if you need a little bit extra, maybe you want the newest version for performance or whatever reason, there actually is a way to upgrade it on Leap. Upgrading the kernel is quite easy on SUSE. I've got the article pulled up here and uh, let's start off. So. First thing you've got to do is you've got to edit zipper.conf. Now this is going to allow you to have multiple this is going to allow you to have multiple versions of the kernel at one time. So if we maximize this here, we can look through So the thing we need to change is so the thing we need to change here is latest running and all of that to latest running oldest and this will allow us to have you know we'll have a couple more options during the boot menu for SUSE. And we can find this with the control W and then just control shift V paste that. This will take us down to here. And we could just add a comma and write oldest. Control O and then exit that out there. And then we're back to the terminal. We go back to the guide. So we have to add the kernel repo. And this is just so that, you know, because if you want to get a newer kernel in SUSE Leap, even with 15, which is like fairly recent, it's using the 412 kernel, it's still not going to have the absolute latest release for the Linux kernel. So we need to fix that and uh, just take the repo here add it to the system it will refresh and uh, this is only going to refresh the kernel it's not going to upgrade the rest of the system so we'll just be using newer versions of the kernel now we can go through and upgrade to the newest version of the kernel and now this is going to give you the release candidates as well. It's just going to give you the absolute latest. But uh, the good thing is you can switch between these at any time. And uh, once you add this, you're going to have to accept the key. We can trust it temporarily. I would say trust it always because it is the official kernel repo. And uh, it's going to refresh the metadata. And uh, we can solve the problems that come up here. I would say choose two so we can keep both of the firmwares. And just two, just choose these solutions to keep the other firmwares. And uh, if it fails out like, you, like it is here, just try again. Choose from different solutions. So uh, I've gone through and I have chosen the number one option. After choosing number two, I was assuming that it would keep the obsolete code and let me uh, install both of them. As it turns out, choosing one for both works the best because it allows to upgrade those. So we're going to grab the latest kernel firmware and we're going to upgrade the system. And this will be a quick process. And uh, this will give leap, and uh, this will give leap a a solid kernel upgrade. Now, the reason that I like going this route is just because OpenSUSE Leap really is a solid distribution for those looking for enterprise grade stable software. And uh, I feel a similar way about Debian with this, and it's it's a solid stable base. But if you upgrade certain aspects to it you can have a rolling kernel a newer kernel and stable user land stuff debian does it quite well with testing but OpenSUSE leap does it way better 
by allowing it to be this easy to upgrade the kernel to whatever release you want and then keep using the rest of the system like normal. It's actually quite awesome. So if you haven't checked out SUSE Leap, maybe you're an, a Red Hat type of person, but you've only used Fedora, I would seriously check out this new release here. Uh, so it's checking for file conflicts and it's going to install our kernel firmware and then we should be able to reboot and load our new version. So now that the kernel is finished installing, all of these modules are included through the DRA cut thing. We can run the reboot command and uh, check out what we have. So we're at the loading screen here, and as you can see, it's a, a small little square, but we can see we are now loading 418 in OpenSUSE Leap. It is a stable distribution, but it's somehow using the 418 release candidate, which is newer than what's on Arch Linux right now. And it's newer than what's on Fedora and a lot of other distributions right now. Uh, it's release candidate, so if you're running a testing distribution, I guess, if you're running the testing version of things like Arch or Gentoo, you might have this too, but the reason that this is so cool is because, like I said earlier, you know, this is not supposed to be happening. The developers don't want you to do this, but uh, as you guys can see, it's running pretty well. We can see we're using 418 default. And uh, if we install screen fetch, we can see that everything is running perfectly fine and our system specs are normal. So yeah, kernel 418 default, uh, running just fine. Anyways guys, uh, if you're a SUSE user, you use Leap, you want a newer kernel, you want stable user land software, or whatever you call it, definitely check out the article in the description and learn how this works. Until next time though, I will see you guys in the next video.